Hey guys, welcome back. So I recently went through the mind-numbing process of trying to eliminate noise from my home studio recordings. Now, this is a very tedious process regardless of how you do it, but I thought that if I shared a few of my learnings and discoveries along the way, it might help others to kind of eliminate some of the headaches associated with this. So when we talk about noise in studio recordings, we're typically talking about one of three things, hiss, hum, or crackling and popping. So of those three categories, the one I was dealing with is hiss. It typically pertains to noise within the electrical circuitry of your actual gear. So somewhere in your signal chain, something is creating noise. And this is very common. Noise typically exists at some degree in recording. The question is, is it at an acceptable level? So um, mine obviously was not, so I needed to discover the root cause so that I could eliminate or mitigate that issue and bring it down to what for me is an acceptable level. Hum is typically associated with a ground loop, which is caused by some piece of electrical circuitry that's not properly grounded. And the third is gonna be crackling and popping, which often pertains to the power source itself. There might be some dirty power coming in from your grid, or it could be caused by faulty cabling or volume pots. Again, this is just broad. There's a lot of things that contribute to all these different types of noise, but this was my experience. First, I'll just play you a quick sample of the type of noise I was facing. So as you can hear, that's definitely hiss, and it's very loud, especially after you, know, you process the signal in, in post-production and you do some mastering. The number that I hear most often um, as an acceptable noise floor level within professional recording is gonna be negative 60 dB or lower as your noise floor. A couple of general principles I would recommend if you're going about the process of trying to diagnose noise in your signal chain. Um, the first would just be to be systematic in your approach. So be really um, isolate each factor that you're trying to test, whether that's a, a cable or a preamp. Make sure that that is the only thing at play so that you're getting a proper evaluation as to whether that particular piece of gear is creating noise. The second thing I'd recommend is be skeptical of your assumptions. Just check the assumptions that you're making at every stage of the process. As an example, um, you'll see later in this video, um, I immediately assumed when I was dealing with noise in a microphone that that is something that would be very complex to fix and that I should immediately take to a mic tech, but it actually ended up being something I could fix myself. Now let's jump into my personal experience. So I have two signal chains that I care a lot about. One is gonna be my microphone signal chain, which goes through a Cush 500 series Omega preamplifier, as well as a um, vintage Tascam mixer from the 80s, which goes into a Tascam tape deck. Um, and then to my Focusrite Scarlett, 18i20 with eight inputs, which is my um, USB interface. So those are the different components to my signal chain as well as the microphones themselves. And that's what I was gonna be testing here. I eliminated tape from the conversation entirely because tape is notorious for creating noise. So I wanted to sort of try to mitigate my tape noise separately from these other two signal chains. And the second signal chain in question here is my electric guitar, which just goes direct into that Tascam mixer through my pedal board. So those are the two that I was most concerned with. In this video, I'm just gonna focus on the mic signal chain because I feel like each is kind of deserving of its own video. Um, because each is equally complex. So um, uh, as far as how I recommend sort of going through this process, I always start with the cheap and potentially free fixes first. So if there is something cheap or free that could fix the problem, let's try that first to see if, um, if we can get by without spending more money. Um, there's always gonna be gear that's advertised to be able to fix all these issues, but oftentimes it's things that we can just do ourselves through maintenance and um, other types of, uh, of um, troubleshooting within the studio. So um, as far as that goes, um, what I did is started testing uh, my cables. If you're able to isolate each cable individually, you can test as to whether any of them or any of the connections are creating noise. I did find one cable that I thought was pretty new in my signal chain that was contributing to white noise. So I threw out that cable and brought in a brand new cable and was able to mitigate the noise to some extent with that. 
Um, the next thing um, I think about doing is like cleaning or maintaining anything. In this particular signal chain, there wasn't a whole lot I could do, but with the guitar, I was able to swab down my pedal connections with uh, rubbing alcohol, and that actually did um, eliminate some hiss. The next thing I did was spend a lot of time uh, testing my preamps. So I have a Kush 500 series Omega preamplifier. I have two of them, um, which get, gets me a stereo signal. And basically I just spent a lot of time cranking it up, listening to noise. It was producing a lot of noise. So I was really worried that this is kind of the end of my relationship with this uh, preamplifier. I also have an 80s Tascam, uh, which is a vintage amp uh, mixer, which I wasn't even testing um, with this because I assumed it's creating noise. And then I have this uh, Scarlett uh, Focusrite USB interface, which um, didn't seem to be creating as much noise as the Kush, but also seemed to be creating noise itself as well. So kind of just nothing definitive there, set that aside, and then I moved on um, to power. And I got a power con Furman power conditioner that I plugged into the wall and plugged all my gear into and noticed no difference whatsoever. Um, I ended up keeping the power conditioner because, you know, it, it's best practice just to protect your gear from surges and whatnot, but didn't help me whatsoever with noise. Um, the last on my list to check were the microphones themselves, which obviously it's kind of hard to isolate from preamps because you needed to be uh, plugged into some kind of a preamp to test um, the noise coming from the microphone. Um, but I did test them and I noticed, so I have two microphones. I have a Coles 4038, which I purchased new. I wasn't noticing a particular amount of noise. They're, they are noisier typically than like a dynamic microphone. It's a ribbon mic, um, but I wasn't noticing like a particularly high level of noise coming from that microphone. And then I tested my other one, which is a CMV 463. It's a vintage Neumann Geffel microphone made in um, East Germany. And I always knew this was a noisy mic. Um, I'll show it to you here. It's a, uh, this is the, the capsule of the mic. And then there's these, um, these M7, um, heads which go on them and there's multiple different um, versions of this and then there's a um, power uh, power supply uh, like it's a vintage old power supply with a, um, a tube inside of it and that's what powers the tube microphone um, so I assumed this was creating some noise I just didn't know how much so this was the last on my list to check. I knew it was creating noise, so I just brought it to my mic tech and he and I troubleshooted for a while together. And what it ended up being was something that's actually, I could have solved and troubleshooted myself. It was the uh, step up transformer that turns our 120 volt American power to 220 volt European power. And you need one of these things if you're using something with European power to give it the appropriate amount of voltage that it needs to run properly. And I did not have the correct one. Mine wasn't stepping up the voltage. So it actually ended up being that this microphone wasn't getting the power it needed. It was still functioning, which was very strange to me, but it wasn't getting the power it needed and that was creating hiss, uh, quite a bit of hiss. So we um, swapped out my um, step up uh, converter to his and immediately noticed a huge reduction in noise. We replaced the tube in the mic, which was very, very old. It was the original tube and that also mitigated some of the noise as well. So I brought that home, plugged it into my preamp and I noticed a huge reduction in noise and it brought it down to what in my estimation is an acceptable level of noise floor. So Long story short, I had to do a lot of testing. This whole process took me days, if not weeks, and that was just one of my signal chains. So follow this video with um, more information on how I went about troubleshooting my um, electric guitar signal chain, as well as the tape machine hiss. Um, but in the meantime, I hope this was helpful to anyone who's struggling with noise um, with their microphone preamps or a signal chain that includes a microphone. And I hope this can be helpful as you work to get as close to quiet recordings as possible. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.